Good day, fellow investors. I looked at all, one by one, the FTSE stocks, and I can conclude that the FTSE as an index is a terrible investment, and those having money in it will see it FTSE away. But I have, from the FTSE, taken out seven stocks. One of those is free REITs, so six stocks and free REITs, to show you how even there you can find good, interesting investments that will likely do okay over time. It, this will be a comparison video also discussing the nine individual positions. It's based off a month of research that I have done over the last month. So if you enjoy this, smash that like button and let's start with the content. Just to show you the work I have done here, this is what I do on my research platform. I research stock by stock and then try to find the ones that best fit my investment ideas. For now I have done more than uh, 400, working on ending it likely next week, and I have selected three stocks that I have put here on my covered stocks list that I will follow over time. But anyway, let's go back to the FTSE and the stocks that we'll discuss today also emphasize on REITs because REITs are lower and cheaper thus. But Let's start with why the FTSE is a terrible investment. And immediately you can see that as an index it didn't do much over the last 25 years. These are minimal, minimal returns, practically no returns, surely less than inflation. So by investing there you have lost money. Maybe those that invested in those periods of crisis, but in those periods whatever you invest in, you make money. So just doubling your money from 1,500 to 3,000 isn't a great investment in this period. Even looking at the FTSE 100 index, the golden years were this, and since then, nothing. And by looking at the FTSE ahead, I think it will continue to offer you nothing as a return. And then you say, Sven, yes, but these are the top 600 stocks traded on the London Stock Exchange. It can't be that bad. Well, there are three reasons why the FTSE is terrible. Number one, the good is not that good and it is at the top of the index. Huge exposure to those companies that are just expensive because people think that they should be expensive. Buying expensive means very bad returns in the future. And let me show you. The top 20 positions in the index make 56% of the FTSE index, of the FTSE 600, likely even more of the FTSE 100. You have to check, I don't know, but anyway. Shell, BP, too expensive now. AstraZeneca, very expensive. This is a bank. Unilever, bad company, bad management too expensive for what it offers. The Agio, okay, good company, but too expensive. Again, expensive. Dividend payer going down. Rio Tinto, too expensive now. Too expensive now. Superstar of the index, doing well, but again, high P ratio. High P ratio, okay, normal utility. And banking, too risky now. So if you get a zero after five years from this, you can consider yourself lucky. That's 50% of the weighted fund. The second reason why it will do bad, because 40%, not of the weighting, but of the listings, are financial parasites. That even if this is an index where you should be paying no fees, 40% of the companies there charge fees for managing money closed-end funds, and I have just selected my data here on Excel, closed-end investments, which means you pay a fee and they reinvest your money in something else, 184, plus a lot of asset managers, and I came to a conclusion that about 40% of the listings, one by one there, are financial parasites that charge you huge fees. Number three, the first two are totally enough that you don't make any money by investing in the FTSE. You should have a lot, a lot of luck to make any money in the next 10 years. So, what is the solution? Well, 
As I went through the list, I have found also good, decent businesses. And if you want a diversified portfolio of 40, 20, 30 decent businesses, you can find them by looking at one by one and then owning those businesses should give you good returns in the next decade, even at current prices. I'm not saying these stocks will go up tomorrow, I'm just saying that these businesses will likely do good compared to the rest of the FTSE over the next decade. And let's immediately start with the first one, Associated British Foods, nothing wrong with the company, market cap 15 billion, P ratio 20, a good dividend yield, but if you look at what they are as a business, they are a diversified company, Sugar was the base, then now retail with Primark has become a more and more important thing. And if you think about it, if they go and just sell Primark or spin it off, such a business growing, having a strong market position, usually can be sold at EBITDA around 12. 1 billion times 12 is 12 billion. So the rest of Associated British Foods is worth just 3 billion if we look at the market capitalization. But then, again, P ratio 20, the dividend yield is there. If they keep growing like they had been in the past, doing their business, then I would assume a high single digit return from investing at it now. I have put it on my watch list because it has no debt, I think very low debt, good business, but I want to watch it and maybe, depending on other opportunities, take action if there is a UK crisis or something like that, this 30% lower would already be a very, very good investment. Another very interesting business is Bunzel, the packaging company. There is a YouTube video that you can uh, check online on their interest rate. Page. So they are packaging, distributing logistics for grocery, food, safety, retail, healthcare, and other. A relatively boring business, but that has significantly spread across the globe. 56% of it is an US business, which is very interesting. They have a good return on invested capital and as Charlie Munger says if the company keeps having a good return that will be your return on investment over time. This is much better than what the FTSE did. They have a good dividend, they are increasing the dividend constantly, the stock follows of course. They are growing through acquisitions but they are not like Wall Street where they uh, merge with something or let's make the company double in two minutes. No, they do these small acquisitions, large numbers, but really with businesses that are complementary with what they do. This allows them to scale on their ecosystem and that allows the growth there, the good cash flows, the relatively okay business, the balance sheet, low debt, gives you a good business, the stock confirms it is a good business. Of course, it has its ups and downs, pandemic related here, but for the rest, pretty stable and just growing at that return on invested capital. So the price is priced equally to the top of the FTSE that we discussed, but the business is of a much, much better version than the other businesses. So long term, it's better owning Bunzel than the FTSE. Now, another interesting business, Smurfit, Kappa, paper business, packaging, nothing spectacular there. But if we look at the company, the stock is, let's say, fairly priced now. It's awaiting whether we will have a boom in the economy or a recession. The stock will follow, but long term, the stock did pretty well. The market capitalization is about 8 billion and we can say that over the average cycle, likely with the growth and everything, they will make around 600 million, which is a P ratio of 13. They pay a nice growing dividend of that and grow, so nothing wrong with the company. 
a good okay company that should be okay being owned over time. The next one, very interesting one, a very famous brand, Dr. Martens. Yes, the boots. If we look at the stock, it went public during the IPO boom and since then it went just down. It's down an incredible 70%, but there is nothing wrong with the business. They are still profitable. They have okay leverage, so not going bankrupt or something. They are doing buybacks. They are paying a dividend. So nothing wrong there. They are looking forward to a little bit still dealing with some issues this year, next year, but then continuing to grow and everything. So given the strength of their brand, buying something at a P ratio of 10 looks like it's priced to be taken over by someone just for the name on the brand that can later scale it. But if we look at brand attractiveness, Dr. Martin's research, Google, the trend is still positive. Some things are going well, some things not as planned, but still profitable, still making money, still having those dividends. Here is the profit. Okay, 26% down, but they still made 159 million and they are well diversified across the globe. As said, the P ratio is around 10 high dividend yield. So, even if they don't make profit next year, somebody will buy them for the brand and then scale that further. So again, one lower risk, interesting business to follow. Now let's discuss the free REITs we have here. When it comes to investing in REITs, first it's all about interest rates. So five years ago, people were looking at 0% in the bank or 3% dividend from REITs. Now you can get 5% in the bank and you say, okay, now I need 6% from REITs. Of course, REITs then crash because from 3%, they now need to give 6%, therefore the stock must go lower. But if you're an investor, if you want to own REITs, then you simply buy, own the properties, get that yield and forget about what happens with the market interest rates. Yes, there are always other opportunities, but this is better than being certain to lose money with the FTSE. If we look at REITs, so as interest rates went up, REITs went down, this happened in the US. Of course, Bank of England rate from zero, from zero for a decade, we are now at 5.25% and that means normally that the REITs are under pressure and therefore the stocks are cheaper. Nobody can predict where will that interest rate go next year. Will it be at 8%? REITs will be even cheaper. Will it be at 2%? You will double your money with REITs. That is the name of the game. But if you're happy with a 6-7% dividend yield, no matter what happens, appreciation from inflation that increases the value of the properties, then that is investing in REITs. Pouring forget about it and see you in 10 years richer. Let's start with the first one that I've just taken three interesting that one can look at. There are a few other interesting student properties. Demand for student housing in the UK is still there. Nothing wrong with that. They make money. Valuation a little bit likely lower because of higher interest rates. So, uh, I don't buy this, for example, but they have good returns, some borrowings, they pay a dividend now, they were closed, of course, uh, during the pandemic, but that is now recovered, and it looks like a good REIT, but because it is a good REIT, also the dividend is a little bit lower. If they pay 1.6 again, that's already a little bit 4-5% as they recover from the pandemic scare. And then owning students, if people will come to study to the UK for the next decades, you have nothing to worry about. If you have something to worry about, this can be converted to homes, etc., etc. So an interesting read to own. Another read, we can own logistics. So logistics already a 7% dividend yield. Of course, it was 
much lower when there was the logistics boom. Everyone was investing in logistics because Amazon was about to take over every warehouse in the world. But okay, now things have stabilized. Even the market likes to overshoot with higher interest rates. And now we have a 7% yield. But you own those logistics centers. Look at the quality tenants, 99%. Rent collection, there was one REIT that uh, rented to homeless people. The collection there is bad and uh, it doesn't look good. So don't take that REIT from the FTSE. But this one, nothing wrong there. Very good loan to value. This is something that American REITs would dream of. The dividend is there. And then it is, as I said, just about owning. So we have discussed student REITs, logistics. Let's now take a diversified REIT if you want to really be diversified and have a peace of mind. Again, 6.7% yield. This is, you might look at, I say it is a lot. No, but with 5.5% offered by the Bank of England, this is still okay. Still expecting that these 5.5% will go and stabilize at four, and then this is normal. If that happens, the stock will go up. If this goes to eight, the stock will go even lower. You can then reinvest the dividend and have more wealth in the future. Diversified, industrial, other retail warehouse. I think the least is office here, very few blues. So uh, offices hit, especially in San Francisco with the venture build businesses going bankrupt. So you don't want to invest in REITs that are exposed to such risks. You own retail like Starbucks and many other across the UK. The loan to value is extremely low, 27% low risk. They are investing, doing what they do, owning the properties, managing, paying a 7% dividend. And uh, that's about it. Whether the stock will go up or down, impossible to know. Whether the dividend will be there next year, that's much easier to know. I don't know whether it is good now or not because I cannot predict interest rates. But I can predict that owning this REIT will not make you poor in the next decade. And that's much better than the FTSE. The last company, Hilton Food Group, it did well in the past. Then we had a crash here. I haven't found a reason why it crashed that big because the numbers slow down a little bit. Okay, but nothing that crazy. Perhaps it was just too expensive back then, but I'm looking at it. Okay, that earnings per share down, okay, 50%. So they stopped growing, but they are still making money. The revenues is still there. Nothing wrong with it. And I think the right PE ratio now, if we calculate here 14 cents for the full year, the P ratio is, yes, 40, but if it returns to previous levels, then we are back to around 20 with the dividend there. And if you look to adjusted basic earnings, we are at 21 times two is 40 for the year. That's a P ratio of 15, nothing wrong for a normal, stable, necessary business out there. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm not saying that all these stocks will just double in the next two months. I'm just saying that those are interesting businesses to follow, to own. And uh, then you see when those businesses, owning those businesses, you can never predict where the stock will go. But if you own something, if it goes lower, you can always buy more and there increase your wealth over time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.